If you'd told me when I was a teenager, 30 years ago, that I would think that a Volvo is one of the best cars you could buy, I would think that you're crazy. But a lot has changed, and Volvos have changed too. They're no longer four wheels and a brick. They're some of the best cars you can buy, and the XC40 just might be one of the most impressive cars I've reviewed. I'm Alex Dalrymple and this is Four Wheels in a Seat, a channel where you can see new cars reviewed every week. But to make sure you don't miss one, please hit the subscribe button down below. And if you enjoy the video, please do give me a like. I really appreciate it. The XC40 first appeared back in 2017 and for 2023 it's had a bit of a facelift. It sits on parent company Geely's CMA platform which it shares with several cars including the Polestar 2. And interesting factoid, this car was actually designed by the current CEO of Polestar. From the front you're not going to mistake this for anything other than a Volvo, especially with that giant classic badge up the front there. The headlight clusters have been slightly redesigned for this year and they still feature the classic Thor's hammer style driving lights that do double duty as turn indicators. The lower lights down here are not fog lights but are actually turning lights to give you better visibility in corners. Side on and you can see this car rides up reasonably high but it's really not terribly long. It is a shorter platform. The wheels are 20 inch diamond cut alloys. We've got roof rails up on top here and a nice big panoramic sunroof. At the back more of the classic Volvo design language. I really like these L-shaped rear light clusters, big Volvo badge there. Under the powered tailgate is a 432 litre storage space which can be expanded by a further 900 litres with the rear seats down. Underneath the floor is another little layer of cargo space and a space saver spare tyre. Every XC40 in the lineup features some sort of electric powertrain, whether that be fully electric or mild hybrid like this Ultimate B5 Dark Edition. All Volvo cars incidentally will be electric by 2030. In the meantime, this car features a 2 litre 4 cylinder petrol engine that outputs 183 kilowatts and 350 newton metres of torque. Fuel economy comes in at an average of 7.2 litres per 100 kilometres on a combined cycle and power is driven to all four wheels via a 8 speed automatic transmission. The interior of the XC40 is very nice. It's classic Scandi design with softish but still fairly firm materials up here on top of the dash. We've got driftwood used as an insert here on the dashboard which is a very nice touch and that extends here onto the doors as well. The seats are leather and everything just feels really solid and really well made. The center console screen is nine inches. It looks nice and sharp. It's been rotated vertically rather than horizontally. It runs Google Automotive, which means that it's not very Volvo specific, but it does everything that you need it to do. There's also wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Although if you're an Android user, you could probably get away without actually having to use Android Auto because you can log in with your Google ID into this system and download various apps and you probably don't actually need to use it, which is pretty good. The native navigation on the system is really good and of course it's Google Maps. Climate control is also run through this system which does take a little bit of getting used to but that doesn't take too long. Under that is a row of buttons pretty much just for your front and rear demister, the hazard lights and the volume control for the sound system. Wireless phone charging underneath that with two USB-C ports and a 12 volt outlet. Then one of my favourite features of this interior which is an option is the crystal gear knob here which has such a nice feel to it and it just feels quite luxurious actually. I, I really like it. A bit of piano black down here which does scratch fairly easily with the cup holders there. Uh, a little hidden cubby just here too and another one uh, here in the front which looks like it might have originally been designed to be an ashtray perhaps. Um, good size center console bin there. A head up display is one thing that's missing that I would love to have in this car but the instrument cluster is very good. There's not a lot of customization available with it though. There are some very nice Google Maps that are displayed in the center which are actually quite helpful to have. The steering wheel has a great feel to it. Uh, it's a classic Volvo unit. Um, the buttons on it though I don't love just because it's a bit hard to work out exactly what it is that they do. I think I've worked out that the sound system controls are mostly here on the right. The adaptive cruise controls are here on the left but they're not marked very clearly so there's a little bit of button mashing that has to go on there. No paddle shifters in this car but you can change gears manually with the crystal knob down the bottom here on the lower console. The seats are firm but they're still very comfortable. They're covered in 
in Ariane leather. There's full electric adjustment for the driver and front passenger, plus some good lumbar support, and the seats are heated too, but not ventilated. Seating position, excellent visibility in every direction. It's a Volvo, so of course, safety comes first. Uh, good amount of headroom here too, with a nice view there through the panoramic sunroof, keeping the cabin nice and light and bright. Sliding into the back seat of the Volvo XC40, and yeah, I feel actually quite upright in this seating position, if I'm honest, and that's causing my head to just touch the top of the ceiling. Um, yeah, that's all right though. Great view through the panoramic sunroof. Knee room at 190 centimetres tall behind my own seating position is actually okay. Bit of a hard plastic shell there though, so if your legs are any longer than mine, you might be just a little bit uncomfortable. We've got a couple of air vents there, a uh, USB-C, we've got two USB-C ports here actually, and the outboard seats here are heated as well. Unfortunately, back seat passengers miss out on the driftwood insert that the front seat passengers get in the door but that's okay. And uh, an armrest with cup holders. So backseat passengers, specifically kids, I think with that USB-C charging, will be pretty happy here in the back of the Volvo XC40. Being a mild hybrid means that this car is always looking for opportunities to turn the engine off in order to save fuel. And that's fine. The only thing is you can't actually stop the car from doing that like you can in most cars. And when you restart at the lights and put your foot on the accelerator, there is just a little bit of a jolt forward. The car just kind of goes up for a moment and that's a little unsettling. Despite being a small SUV, this car does actually feel bigger than it is. And it's also just so solid. Everything just feels like it's made out of brick or concrete. You feel very safe in this car. Safety gear, well, being a Volvo, it kind of goes without saying that this car is pretty well stocked. It's got everything you could possibly want, including blind spot monitors and the wing mirrors, forward collision mitigation support, and adaptive cruise control. Driving a Volvo doesn't really make a lot of heads turn, unless, of course, you're a Volvo fan, which I think I'm becoming, because they are really good looking cars, but maybe just a little bit anonymous in SUV form especially at the uh, school pick up and drop off because you're in a sea of Volvos and Audis and Mercedes Benzes there, it kind of blends in. What the car was alerting me to just then, I have no idea, but it was flashing red at something. Might've been a parked car on the side of the road. That is one of the issues with a lot of these collision systems, and it's not just Volvo, it's every car maker virtually. They have a lot of trouble distinguishing from a parked car on the side of a road on a bend to something legitimately stopping in front of you. Now, regular viewers of this channel might realize that this is actually the first Volvo I've reviewed. In fact, it's the first Volvo I've driven in about 20 years, not including the Polestar 2. And I remember driving my friend's old Volvo 20 years ago, and it was an old car back then, and it felt kind of like a big wallowy sponge that was made out of brick. This is definitely not that. It still feels just as solid, but the driving experience is much, much better. The steering has a nice firm feel to it, and you can actually adjust that on the center screen and make it firmer or softer if you prefer. The driving experience of this car is just so good. But having said that though, there is a little bit of body roll in the corners. It's just sort of preferencing ride comfort over maneuverability. The ride is very, very smooth. It's very comfortable, a very refined car to drive, nice and quiet in the cabin, very little noise coming through from the outside world at all. I've very much fallen into the trap of noticing the car you're driving more often on the road. So now I'm seeing Volvo XC40s everywhere. There's so many of them. Could have something to do with the eastern suburbs neighborhood I'm driving through right now though. The top down 360 degree parking camera is a big help. And you can also change the angle of the camera as you're parking. If you wanna see something behind you or next to you or in front of you. And the wing mirrors also tilt down to help get nice and close to the curb without hitting it. 
and you can adjust that also in the center console screen. Starting with the drive away price of just over $60,000 and about $77.5 for how you see it here, the Volvo XC40 is certainly not the cheapest small SUV you can buy, but it is one of the nicest. And if you're thinking about a small luxury European SUV, it's one you should definitely consider.